as promised, we're going to dive straight back into the world of 3D vectors. I hope that you had some opportunity within the last four weeks <laughs> to remember, yes, uh, prior to you jumping into the holidays, we sort of introduced this topic, right? We built straight off of what we did in extension one vectors in 2D. And we're like, well, when we lift this into three dimensions, what's different? And what's the same? Uh, we introduced the idea of the dot product in extension one and then looked at it ever so briefly uh, at the end of last term. So rather than just jump off and assume you remember that, let's see if we can collectively put back into our memory, uh, number one, how to calculate the dot product. And then I'm also going to ask you, what does that thing mean again? So I wonder if anyone can help me. Going back to extension one, we can calculate the dot product I'll even give you a hand. It's really simple. There are two little products involved when you're doing the dot product of a pair of 2D vectors. Can anyone help me start? What are the things that we're multiplying together to work out a 2D dot product? Jia, yeah, go ahead. Okay, x1, x2 plus y1, y2. x1, x2 plus y1, y2. So before I jot down something pretty much equivalent to that. Let's remember what he's talking about. You got two vectors, they each have like a horizontal component, they each have a vertical component. So you just kind of pair them up and then off you go, okay? Perfect. I've called my two vectors that I'm dot producting, dot multiplying, um, A and B. So a way that might be more relevant to this is rather than x1, x2, I'm gonna call them x, A, right, that's the x of the first one, and then the x of the second one, right, xb, right? So there's my x1, x2, as it were, xa, xb, and then if I just carry that along, I then do the vertical components. Yeah, so I guess I would very creatively call them yA y, and yB, fantastic. Now, I wonder if you can remember that this is not the only way to compute the dot product. There's another way, or this other way gives you access to knowing uh, another sort of tool to use. If you can think back to some of your trigonometry. Calvin, you want to give us a go? Um, the absolute value of um, A times absolute value of B times cos C, which is an angle to the point of view. Yeah, fantastic. So we've got our magnitudes of each of our vectors, and then we multiply it by the, well, I, sort of canonically, we call it theta. It doesn't really matter, of course, what you call it. C is also fine. Um, this, of course, importantly, is the angle between the two A and B vectors. Now, this is important because you can imagine um, my two vectors could be anywhere, right? They could sort of be like, whoop, here they are, okay, depending on their positions. But what we do is we say, imagine them together, right? We put their tails together, and then we consider this angle in here. Right? Now this is very important because if, for example, um, you've got these two vectors and they're pointing in exactly the same direction, what is theta going to be equal to? This is zero, right? So when you go ahead and work out cos of zero, cos of zero is one. So therefore, you're multiplying these things and they're working in the maximum, like same direction together. Do you remember that? If I then say, oh, what if I have a theta of pi on two? Cos of pi on two is? Zero. So in fact, your dot product ends up being zero if your two vectors are perpendicular or a better word in the context of vectors is orthogonal, right? And then one last one, just as a classic example. If we then said, okay, if our vectors are heading in the opposite direction, right? Uh, the theta between them will be pi and cos of pi is, cos of pi is, it's negative one, negative one. So they are acting in the most opposite direction we can, right? Does that make sense? So you get like some large negative number, okay? Now this is my segue to remind you, this is how you calculate the dot product, but what does it mean again? We gave you like a bunch of different metaphors for this. How would you describe it? This is the hard part. Hmm. This is that moment, much like Mrs. Lee's and I get when we're, when we're marking your papers, and sometimes it's like, have I taught them anything? Um, what does it mean to say, and I was giving you these sort of vectors to give you an, an illustration of this, right? It's one way to think of it is, how much, of these, how much are these vectors working together with each other, right? Are they working really alongside each other? Are they kind of working like nothing to do with each other, right? They're orthogonal. Are they working opposite to each other? That's kind of what this is telling you, yeah? Wonderful. So, 
again, we already actually know this bit, but to get your brain in the same spot, if we were to extend this two-dimensional result here into three dimensions, well, it doesn't take a huge amount of creativity. What's going to change? Instead of doing x a x b plus y a y b, what's going to be change is the wrong word. What's additional to this? There's just yeah. There's just the common. Write it with me, right? We've got all of the same stuff we had before. X a x b because there's still a horizontal component. Y a y b because there's still a vertical component. But now I've got a a third dimension, right? So I'm going to go z a z b. Okay. Now, at this point, I want you to remember, and I'm just going to run out of hands. I should have brought the table back out to do this. When we go into 3D, even though computing it in component form requires us to have this extra dimension on there, when we go and try and do this you know, comparison to the trigonometric form, I wonder how many of you were surprised that, in fact, the result is, like, what's the formula in three dimensions? It's, say it again. I heard it. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Uh, magnitude of A, magnitude of B, and then cause of the angle between them. And the reason for that is, even when you're in three dimensions and you've got two vectors off in weird, wonderful directions, right? You can always find a single plane. A single plane. It just might be at a weird, funny orientation, you can always find a single plane that both of your vectors will sit on. And so for the purposes of working out, like, are these guys working together? Are they working against each other? You're going to work out this same thing. It's just like you were in two dimensions. You just kind of have to rotate until you see them almost like flat onto a different plane. OK, so that's what the dot product was. And you can just calculate it. It's not that hard. And in fact, that's almost what we're about to do. But what I want you to focus on today is that you can use this thing. You can apply the dot product to solve a couple of, well, not a couple of different problems, many different problems. We're just going to do a couple today, though. Have a look at this heading here. This is A1 for application 1. You might be able to make a guess at what this application is based on this secondary form of the dot product. It's not just the components, it's got this cos theta in it, right? So what we can use the dot product for, one of its many uses is to work out between vectors, if you don't already know what it is, you can work out the angle between the vectors. So this is going to be our first application. Now, it's not too hard to think about the path through this, and I'm going to get you guys to do this now, because I think you don't need too much help to get on the road. If you have a look at this pair of vectors here, A and B, I can very straightforwardly, I'm going to ask you to start it now, in a straightforward fashion, I can compute the dot product. It's just going to be a number at the end, right? I'm going to match up my horizontal components, my vertical ones, my deep other ones, right? I'm going to multiply each one through. I'll just get a number out, right? But according to the fact that I can use these two different ways of thinking about the dot product, once you get this number, on the left, it equals this thing on the right. They're the same, they're two different perspectives on the same object, right? So therefore, if you can work out everything on the left, if you can work out the magnitude of vector A and the magnitude of vector B, then the only thing that's left, the only unknown, is cos theta. So I'm going to ask you, and this is why I mentioned you're going to need calculators there, in degrees, I wonder if off the basis of the dot product, maybe you're already you've already computed, can you work out the angle that will be formed between these two vectors? Can you have a go at that? Um, I'll give you guys a couple minutes. I know some people are still jotting down notes as I was speaking. Have a go, and then we'll come back together. All right, so I think hopefully that was enough catch-up time. For those of you who it's like, OK, brain's still warming up because body's still warming up, all that kind of thing, right? Let me walk you through how I've done this, OK? The dot product, as I mentioned before, is kind of my doorway into working out my angles here, right? Or angle, singular, OK? What I've done here is on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, I've just computed the dot product twice, just from different formulas, as it were, right? So here's me doing the components. I hope you agree that I've done my x's and then I've done my uh, y's and then my z's, as it were. Um, Emmanuel asked me a good question before, which was that you know this has been provided in component form. Can I write it in column form if that makes it easier for me? And the answer is, just like in complex numbers, 
unless it's specified, you use the form that is most appropriate to the solving of the question. So if that made you feel better, um, that you could say, oh, I can see the negative 2 and the 1, and the negative 3 and the negative 2, and the 2 and the 1 lining up horizontally. If that works for you, go for it. Um, however, do be mindful. Sometimes they do specify every now and then, as you saw in your recent task. We'll sometimes say, we want you to use this form of a complex number, and we can just as easily say, we want you to use this form of a vector. Okay? Didn't specify here, so do whatever you like. I've computed it from both sides, and once you do all the substitution, right, here's the matching up of components. Here's me working out um, each of the magnitudes of the vectors, just using Pythagoras. Okay? You end up with something like this. Do I get some agreement? Is that looking okay? Right? Um, of course, this part here you might feel is slightly excessive. All of this could have just been done by your calculator because that's where you were going anyway. Um, but I think it is always helpful, especially given the number of arithmetical errors that were made in your recent exams. Push your brain, please. Don't just let it atrophy because that's what happens when you don't use it. Uh, make sure you know what you're doing here. What angle did you get? I asked for it in degrees, I think. 54? You happy with that? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I was like, oh, I remembered something different, and then I realized I didn't round to the nearest unit. I ran it to decimals, but that's fine with me. Um, I even didn't provide an accuracy, so that's my fault. Happy with that? Makes sense? Uh, one of the wonderful things about this, by the way, is that unlike, say, you know when you learnt the sign rule the first time? Do you remember that back in, like, year 10? Uh, we had to deal with ambiguity, the ambiguous case of the sign rule, but the cosine rule has no such problem, right? Because when you run through from 0 all through a through to pi, you get, what's the word I'm looking for? Unique values, right? You don't have to think, oh, do I have the acute version or the obtuse version? So in fact, if you wanted, you could have said right from the outset, and the textbook actually does this, right? It says theta is equal to, unambiguously, cos inverse of, and then it takes your dot product over here, and then divides through by everything over here on the right hand side, right? So if you wanted it, not that I think it's worth memorizing, but what did I just say? Cos, sorry, theta equals cos, <laughs> why did I rub that out? Um, where's my components? So I guess I would just say a dot b all over what was left on the right hand side. It's the magnitude of a and the magnitude of b. And just Chuck that in there, right? Um, I think it is vastly superior to actually know what you're doing rather than have another formula in your head, which you could just as easily have gotten from rearranging that. But you'll see this sometimes, so I want you to know where it comes from. Okay?